Hello and welcome to I Will Break Your Game, featuring Talos Principle. Talos Principle is a fantastic game, so I recommend you go and play it before you watch this series. It's got really good narrative and really good puzzle design, and obviously there are going to be spoilers in a series like this. So go and play it, and then come back to this series. Unfortunately, just for convenience sake and for time, uh, I will be skipping over character dialogue and major plot points, pretty much the entire story of the game. This is a challenge run. Uh, the entire point of the challenge run is to see how many puzzles are breakable within Talos. Uh, break constitutes any solution not intended by the developers. They don't necessarily have to be easier than the intended solutions, and in fact, in most cases, they're really not easier. Uh, it's just a challenge to see if they can be broken. Right at the start of the game here, uh, there's a small puzzly section with uh, a couple of jammers, and you're not really expected to take either of the jammers with you. However, if you pick up the second jammer and turn around, you can re-jam the mine and then take the first jammer with you and block the turret with it. Then if you run all the way to the end of this corridor and turn around, you can block the turret with the first jammer and then come back and grab the second jammer and bring both jammers with you. And these will allow us to break puzzles later on in this level. The breaks in Talos seem to tend to come in two main categories and that's mechanical breaks, so uh, breaks where you actually exploit the mechanisms of the game and architectural breaks where you get out of the map or jump onto walls you're not supposed to get onto and what's nice is that this first level allows us to showcase both so this puzzle here is a, a mechanics break uh, what we're going to do is just take the two jammers that we've brought with us and we use them to uh, jam both the mines in this puzzle from outside which really kind of removes all the challenge from this actual puzzle you can simply walk in, take the jammer and go straight to the exit so this is a, a nice demonstration of breaking the actual mechanics of the game to reach a solution. That mine at the back is a little bit tricky to get, I missed there. Uh, there we go. And then all we have to do is head to the, oh, not forgetting the jammer. Uh, and then we can head to the fizzler at the back and collect the sigil immediately. A nice simple break there uh, for the first puzzle. The shapes you are collecting are not mere toys. They are the, sigils the solution to the second puzzle here is pretty similar. Uh, we're just going to jam the turret from outside. What you would usually have to do is take this jammer here and open up a fizzler to allow the mine to leave and then close the fizzler off again so the mine can't get back in. But you don't really have to do any of that if you jam the turret from the outside. You can just simply um, jam the mine. I'm calling them fizzlers, that's a portal terminology. I'm not sure what they're called in this game, but I'll stick with fizzlers. Uh, this puzzle here is uh, nice because it's not a, a mechanics break, this is an architectural break, and it's the first one we'll come to. It's also kind of cool because this architectural break doesn't just allow us to break this puzzle, it allows us to break some of the others in this world, and a couple of other cool things as well. Uh, this is a little bit of a tricky series of jumps, so I will be cutting out uh, some of these attempts. Uh, so there's a first jump onto that wall and then you avoid that gate and jump down here. So it's three jumps, the first of which is a little bit tricky, the second and third aren't too bad. And then you can run along these walls and collect the sigil. So there we are. Um, you'll notice I've got developer cheats enabled up in that top right. That's because some uh, series of jumps, like the one you just saw isn't too bad, but they can get a lot more convoluted. Sometimes if they're quite long and tricky, I don't want to have to attempt them over and over again if the attempts themselves are pretty long. Um, so I'm just going to god mode myself back to certain places, but all of the solutions themselves are legitimate. Uh, and, but, and you you can feel free to try them on your game. You should also be able to replicate my results here. Even though I think I'm fairly good at finding these breaks, I'm not very good at executing them, so I think anyone should be able to repeat what I've done. Where I'm headed at the moment, by the way, is not to an actual puzzle, but the area I'm going to go to is actually kind of cool, so I just thought I'd take a little detour and show you something. Uh, we're actually outside of the map here, which is why you're getting some weird flickering of assets just disappearing. Um, so we're just going to follow this wall. I'm really trying to hug the wall quite tightly, because if you head too far out of the map, Elohim starts giving you this speech about, in the beginning there were words, and if you get too far away, then he quote-unquote kills you. So... If you run along these walls here, you may recognise where we are. Uh, just jump on top of some of these walls, and we arrive actually on the top of this little sort of coliseum area where we begin the game. So that that's that's where you actually start. 
which I thought was kind of cool. Uh, but this isn't actually a puzzle, so we'll head to the next puzzle to break. Um, I'm not going to be collecting stars in this run for a couple of reasons. First of all, the solutions to the stars themselves are actually already kind of breaks. Uh, the developers were very aware of some of the limitations and some of the ways you could exploit the mechanics of, of their game. And it's really cool because they allow you, in some instances, I think, to complete a puzzle in several ways, even though they could, if they wanted to, have uh, stopped you from doing so by kind of fixing it. But they, they left some of them in. Uh, and stars are a prime example of that. A lot of the stars require kind of an exploit of, of their mechanics to, to get to them. Uh, the other reason is that stars, because they're not in self-contained puzzles, a lot of the time it can be um, questionable as to what the actual intended solution for some of the harder stars particularly actually are. So I'm not really sure. Sometimes I might feel like I'm breaking the game to get to one of the stars, but it could have actually been the intended solution because the stars can be pretty tricky. Um, some of the areas around here that I'm looking at are, you actually can't get to other uh, in other ways. You have to get out of the terrain to be able to get into them, which is kind of cool. So if you manage to get up here, feel free to go and explore some of those areas. But we're going to head along here. There's quite a tricky jump coming up. You have to get it fairly precisely. So you can see a raised shelf over at the back there that we're going to jump onto. Um, if you repeat this, try and get to exactly where I land. If you overshoot that, then you actually go too far and get um, reset by Elohim. And if you don't make it, then you don't land on the shelf and you can't get onto this wall and complete this puzzle. And the next one as well will require us to come back here. I've brought the jammer with me from the puzzle where we first got out of the map because the next puzzle that we go to, uh, we're going to want to jam a turret that overlooks the sigil when we collect it. Uh, this time we're going in the same direction along these walls. Uh, I couldn't actually remember whether it was left or right, but I think this is the correct direction. So I don't think we're going to have to backtrack. Um, the purple fizzler here isn't solid, so you do have to jump over it as opposed to walk on it, but the blue fizzlers you can walk on. Um, over in this direction, uh, just while we're here, you can actually see that that area there is the star, and if you walk along some of these walls, you can quite easily get into that star chamber um, if you don't have a jammer with you. If you do have this jammer with you, then you can go and use it and just open the star chamber very easily by uh, jamming that fizzler right there. Uh, but we're not going to head over to the star, we're going to go in this direction. You'll have to excuse the jump cut coming up in just a second, because I did actually fall off here trying to make this jump, even though it's a pretty easy jump. Um, so in a second, we're going to be jamming the turret by placing uh, the jammer on the wall. Be careful if you ever do this, because when you place the jammer on top of a wall, it kind of tries to push you off the wall, and if you fall off in the wrong direction, then you're going to have to start again. And thus concludes episode one. Thank you very much for watching. Next time, we'll be finishing off level one with some more tricky architecture breaks. See you then.